I'm Alan Zeitrick from NetEvents TV. Endpoint security is an important issue. One of the challenges, though, is defining exactly what the endpoint is. Another challenge, figuring out what to do with the reams and reams and reams of data that's generated by endpoint diagnostics tools and instrumentation. In this documentary, we're talking to experts about those questions and others regarding endpoint security. The first question we asked our experts is, exactly how do you define an endpoint? And which endpoints are important to protect in the enterprise? For us at Zifton, we take a very holistic view of endpoint. Uh, we'll talk about it as client to cloud, but I think of it as old school kind of client to server paradigm. And so we want to be on both ends of that wire. And so we deploy on your traditional user client devices, so laptops, desktops, even virtualized desktops. And then we also install in the data center, whether it's physical servers, virtualized uh, machines, virtual machines in that data center, even containers. And we can even deploy on those virtual machines or those virtual endpoints, even in an enterprise cloud application. So for us, we take a very broad view of the word endpoint as opposed to just user devices. I'll say that probably uh, the main endpoints that needs the extra protection are those endpoints that connected to the uh, domain environment as literally they are the gateway uh, to, for attackers to get the most sensitive uh, information about the entire organization. All of them? So the reality is, is that Windows is where the most targets attack, where the majority of malware and exploits uh, ultimately you know, target. So protecting your Windows environments, your Windows users, both inside your uh, business as well as when they're remote, is, is the core feature, core component. Well, I mean, applications need to be protected. So if you start looking at, at the systems that are running, the computer systems that are running on that, the threat vectors constantly change. So as you have these cloud-based solutions or you have solutions that your customers' applications, your customers interact with, you need to make sure that those things stay secure um, because obviously you can get compromised and information can go out. So I think every endpoint can be a target of an attack or something. So, but usually companies start first with high privilege boxes like administrator consoles to onboard to, to service. Uh, but everybody can be a victim. For the most part, we were talking about traditional endpoints, but what about in the cloud? Platform as a service, infrastructure as a service. We asked the experts. Endpoints in the cloud are extremely important. Everybody's moved to the cloud, so a lot of your critical assets even are, are, uh, live in the cloud, and your critical data, your PII, PHI, whatever it might be. Um, you have to protect your endpoints from, from all vectors in the cloud as well, um, and our technology does extremely well in the cloud in virtual environments as well, because it's, it's a very low utilization, low footprint type of uh, technology. If we talk about Windows Defender ATP, which is our post-breach solution, for instance, we run on every Windows endpoint, Windows 10. So if it's in the cloud, if it's on-premise, we don't really care. It's the same for all the other security that is built in into Windows. It's an endpoint, and wherever this endpoint is, it's protected. Absolutely, uh, and even more so because they're not uh, within your physical premise anymore. They might be run on someone else's hypervisor. So, so I think that's critical to have a strategy for not only protecting, but also having an understanding of what's going on in those endpoints. So you have the visibility and the auditability. Context, as they say, is everything. Some endpoint security tools focus on what's happening in this instant, in the here and now. Others work to place everything in a historical context. We asked our experts, how important is that historical context in understanding breaches and vulnerabilities? Context is everything. Ultimately, you cannot act upon data and make it actionable unless you understand the context, whether it's the delivery mechanic, what was going on, what was attempted, or what their user was doing at that specific moment in time. Without context, you can't act intelligently and solve the root problem. Well, for us, both, you have to have both real-time and contextual data, historical data. You don't go to the doctor you know, today and find out you have cancer, you don't want to get in that situation and never have been to the doctor for a checkup in the last four years. You want to go to the doctor and have a checkup every year. Same thing from a security standpoint. It's about establishing a trend and being able to see what's happening over time. A lot of people want to talk about real-time data or real-time intelligence, and that's important, but really, that's a little bit too late. It's too little too late. Effectively, you want to have 
The ability to look at real-time intelligence and data and respond right now to what's happening in your environment, but you need to be able to go back in time and do forensics investigations and understand what, what's happened in your environment over the last six, the last 12, even the last 18 months. So we, we help provide that data and maintain that data over a historical period of 12 months or more. So it's actually very important. So if you think of numbers or statistics, they say a breach, um, it takes 200 days to discover a breach. You want to go back in time. So sometimes you only learn today that this is an attack, that this is a certain pattern of an attack. So you now have new IOAs, IOCs, and with Windows Defender ATP, we will apply them like this new pattern back to up to six months of historical data where now our customer can actually go back and investigate an attack that happened a little bit before. I ask the experts, once the security team has been alerted to a potential vulnerability or an actual breach, how can they track down the place that that breach began, the famous patient zero? There will be an alert, of course, either in the seam or they go to our portal, they configure email, whatever. So after they got an alert, they go and investigate in our portal. We raise alerts uh, based on behavioral events that we collected from the box. And our tool gives them all the investigation capabilities. We show the process tree, the time, the user, the machine, where did the file go, where did it came from. So that's what's the beauty about our tool. So it gives you the entire visibility into what happened on the endpoint with contextual, um, co with, with a behavioral context. The important thing that many customers lack today, and, and the statistics shows that you can be infected for many months before detecting it, is because they don't have the visibility today. We need to have visibility on what's going on on the endpoint, in the network, and all the different logs that we collect. Uh, and if we don't have that, it's very hard to track down exactly uh, what happened and what was the root cause for that. Raw data is overwhelming. I asked the experts in their final question, how can we overcome data overload? How can we filter out noise and leave behind only actionable intelligence that security teams can act on? I think the important thing is to look at the three different categories, uh, the, the known good, the known bads, and then everything in between. So, uh, and Everything in between is really where artificial intelligence is starting to help us now in the security industry. So with the help of artificial intelligence, you can go through all the noise to really find the signals that are relevant for you to work with. Because the amount of data is so big, you can't crunch it manually, and you don't want to be reactive, because then bad stuff already happened. So I think really artificial intelligence is, is, is the answer to that question. The real issue is a lot of people like to talk about the security operations teams having to run around and try to figure out do they have all the data they need to accurately respond to a threat or even to find a threat? And that's where us being able to provide intelligence over a period of time, plus what's happening right now in your environment, bringing that context and that intelligence to their screen instantly and giving them a view of what does this mean right now? Do I have all access to all the data? That's how you short circuit their workload. If you can give them access to all the intelligence they need right now, they can very quickly respond appropriately, take care of the threat, do their research, and move on, and minimize the number of things that they really have to clean up and respond to. As we've heard, endpoint security is complicated. There are many endpoints to be protected and too much data being generated. Hopefully, you've learned from this documentary what you can do to determine which endpoints need to be protected, including virtual cloud endpoints, and how to handle the problem of simply too much data. I'm Alan Zajcik with NetEvents TV.